Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we are going to be looking at the weekly meta breakdown. We're going to be looking at the timeless best of three format, and we are going to be looking at kind of our first snapshot of the format post Thunder Junction release. We did the best of one last week, if you're interested in taking a look at what's happening there. Uh, with these eternal formats, it generally takes a little bit longer for us to get the full kind of meta game idea in terms of what's happening uh, for the format itself. So what we are going to be looking at, I did a mix of like 20 game and 40 game caps. We'll look platinum to mythic correction. We'll look two weeks worth of data just to get enough of a sample to get a feel for it. The one kind of interesting tidbit that I noticed was there weren't really any deck lists showing up for show and tell. Now show and tell was a card is coming up and it was in a sideboard of a reanimator deck but it wasn't the traditional show and tell build i don't know if people are just taking a break from it just didn't get the game cap what's happening there but that will be the one kind of notable omission from the deck list that we're looking at today uh that didn't see the show and tell list in which I, I i don't play the deck i don't know if it's poorly situated right now i do see it from time to time and people do enjoy that type of deck but uh interesting just to kind of see it there so we're going to look at um, popularity of the date, and then we'll jump into the deck list themselves and kind of go from there. We're going to get the data from Untapped GG, a companion tool that runs alongside Arena's client. I agree it's user win rates because there's a whole bunch of cool stats. Uh, link for Untapped is in the video description, and then I will paste the deck lists themselves uh, with timestamps, so you can just copy-paste as you wish. Um, so we will jump into it. Uh, popularity of the day, Demir Control is 21%, Demir Mill at about 13 Rakdos Burn and Yawgmoth. It's very like interesting kind of popularity. With these er early weeks of the new format, it's kind of all over the place. So I'm less concerned with the popularity. Like we could see Show and Tell was the most popular, kind of dropped off. Then we see like Demir Mill with the new set kind of popping off terms of popularity i think this week it's less on the popularity more just looking at the deck list as the meta kind of shapes up so like i said we are looking 8500 games april 22nd uh to now uh if we look at the 16th to now we also get about 15,000 games so we're going to look at both kind of parameters here uh we're going to look at the open end i was basically filtering between the two data sets to give us a curated list in terms of like what is the most interesting kind of slice and dice just to see what people are trying out but we'll jump into it Rakdos burn with slick shot show off is showing up at 83 percent win rate um so the deck itself we have slick shot show off card that i'm in love with been playing it in a bunch of different formats we have Screw the Critics, Light of Stage, Bolt. So it's just your burn deck, which show off as a secondary one drop over the Eidolon. It lets you push kind of huge amounts of damage through uh, in terms of just pumping out like to hit your opponent. Um, kind of same burn package, two Kamanos, still the Okibas in here. What's interesting, you have an aggressive deck that's also opting to play a couple Raucous Theaters in here. Uh, 18 Lions, no uh, Ramanap Bruins, no Den of the Bugbear, nothing like that. Your sideboard, you have the Lurus Companion, you have Reanimate, bring back stuff in the Grindier matchups, Fatal Pushes, Thoughtseize, the other Bowmaster, Warling Vortex versus the Show and Tell matchup, or Control, Searing Blood versus the Creature matchups, Murderous Cut as a cheap removal spell as well. Nothing really new with the Grixis tempo, but a fairly high win rate. This is like the Grixis Shadow List, Death Shadows, Scourge of the Skyclave card that you can definitely see play. This is the four color variant that's just splashing white for sideboard cards for particular matchups. You can definitely play Reanimate in this deck. You have a bunch of cheap creatures that can come back and the life loss isn't necessarily a negative with it. Uh, this version is on Scourge with Inti to kind of push through some trample damage as well. I'm um, seeing Ragavan in here, Stalactite Stalker is another thing you could consider in the Shadow decks, uh, or Deathrite Shaman, depending on how you want to kind of play it out. Uh, Alpine Moon for, I guess, Utility Lands, stuff like that, Field of the Dead, Deafening Silence in this version for the Storm, Invasive Surgery as a show and tell target, Rolling Vortex, Lavinia, just a whole bunch of hate cards in the sideboard itself. Another deck that hasn't seen too much update, so we're just going to kind of go over quick, but 77% win rate. Or the Yawgmoth deck, um, basically just backdoor into the natural order on turn three with one of your dorks into either Traxa or Crater Hoof if you'd like. 
Uh, but then you have like the Yogg combo where you can basically loop young wolves with a blood artist out, train your opponent out, make a bunch of tokens with a Patra kind of sequence of cards. Sideboard again, just some removal options, hand hate, graveyard hate, protection spells, counter spells as needed, activated abilities. You got Lavinia for like combo decks or like Storm, um, Pylon as removal. So you got a couple different options with the deck itself. Then we go to a spicy one. So Demir Control. We've had Demir Control in the format, but this one got a couple new upgrades and a kind of combo-esque. So with Jace a Reawakened, uh, this can only be played after turn three. Let's you loot, draw this card, and then you can plus it to plot a card from your hand with mana value three or less. If you do, it becomes plotted. You can cast the next turn for zero mana. And what you do is you plot Valky. And with Valky, you can cast Tybalt. So Basically, on turn five, you can get a Tybalt out for free. Notably, if you do do this casting with a Whirling Vortex out, you will take five damage. My opponent learned that the hard way when I ran into this deck. This deck's also on Mana Drains. That just helps you ramp up ahead, can give you a reduced cost, like Dig Through Time, Lauren Revealed, stuff like that nature. Otherwise, it's pretty much the like Missman Special Demir Control. Uh, sideboard, just various removal spells, utility artifacts, activated abilities, Graveyard Hate, Graveyard Hate, different types of counters or interaction as well. We then go to a, kind of a cool mashup. So it is five color reanimator, but it's basically the Rakdos Breach deck. 73% win rate here um, with access to Faithless Looting with the reanimate package. So either you can use reanimate to get you kind of your combo pieces out for the Breach combo. Uh, you can just kind of keep chaining things together, reanimate Stitchers, you have Edicts, Demonic Tutor, you use on the World Breach, cast a bunch of stuff, tendrils out your opponent. Or you can, you know, turn one troll, put it into your graveyard, Atraxa, and then just reanimate that. So you kind of have two combos in one. You have the Breach lines, and then you just have big fatty lines. Your sideboard, just removal options, um, kind of mill cards. You have Alter Dementia, I guess, to mill out your opponent as well. Um, so kind of a different approach. Feed the Swarm for hate pieces, Molten Collapse for removal hate pieces, Bowmasters. Uh, no Bowmasters main in this one. Vortex versus Control. Uh, that's his Oracle. If you just mill yourself out, uh, you can win that way by drying out. So that's a different approach. And then the Licensors. Uh, so this particular player was playing the deck. So we got stats on like Mythic. This person went 20 and 3 with the deck. So a lot of the win rate is driven by this individual. Uh, Biametti. So kind of cool there. Uh, again, another deck that hasn't changed too much. We have the uh, Mono Black Vampires list from Ulthrix. Turn one Dark Ritual Soren into Vein Ripper or Necropotence and kind of go to town like that. We've seen these shells. Very clean sideboard. Graveyard interaction or like from the library. Removal. Combo hate. Search and Graveyard hate. Verland Plague or Field of the Dead, which we don't really see too much of anymore with all the combo decks going around. Go to Rakdos Midrange Reanimator. So another deck that's leveraging the Reanimate package with your uh, land cyclers. So it helps you hit your land drops, but also gives you a target for Reanimate. So kind of a pseudo entomb effect that's paired up here. One Ring, Shieldred, Blood Moon's Main, uh, and then you just kind of go to town like that. Uh, this version here, you have like Minsk and Boo in the sideboard, just various utility spells, removal, hand hate, surgicals in there as well. Uh, so just various pieces to use uh, depending on the matchup. Now, this is the best win rate I could find of an Esper Stoneblade deck. So for those unfamiliar, Stoneblade is usually an archetype built around Stoneforge Mystic with the various swords. Um, Stoneforge Mistress, Mystic is part of Special Guests. Let's you tutor an enchant, or sorry, an equipment from your library, and then you can pay two mana to, at instant speed to put it into play. So that's tutoring things like assimilation, Aegis, three mana equipment. When it enters the battlefield, you get to exile up to one target creature until it leaves the battlefield. And then whenever uh, the Aegis becomes attached to a creature for as long as it remains attached, that creature becomes a copy of that creature. Uh, so you, say you exile an Atraxa, your creature becomes a copy of Atraxa. Cryptic Coat, and then Sword of Fire and Ice mixed into there as well. Mana Drain, so it's kind of like a counter spell based tempo control that you then find one of your pieces, your Snapcasters, Bowmasters, whatever, throw on an equipment, or just keep using Cryptic Coat to kind of get, get through your opponent that way there. 
And then lastly, just to show various Demir Mill decks, I was trying to invest the one, this version here, 44%. So not doing too great. I think this one's a little bit more counterspell heavy with like Jaces and stuff. My version was a little bit more like focused on the mill, less kind of interacting with the stack. Um, I was playing this Merrick Orb, helps speed things up a little, but the big kind of draw of this archetype is Archive Trap. Your opponent casts a fetch or searches with fetch line, you mill them 13 for free. Uh, then you could surgical extraction key hate pieces. This deck was actually pretty good in Best of One against uh, Show and Tell. If you can strategically hit like a Show and Tell, they usually don't have a way to really do anything other than hard casting omniscience later in the game, uh, which is kind of fun that way there. Um, and then you just have like various hate pieces that we see in the Demir kind of control style strategies, removal options, counter spells, graveyard hate, different things of that nature. That's it for the week. Let me know what you think, what you've been playing. And I actually haven't been playing too much timeless this last week or so. I've been practicing for RCQ, but let me know what you think of the kind of exclusion of show and tell if it's actually reflective of what you're seeing on the ladder. Like I was watching this man play a bit today and was running into a lot of like black mid-range style decks with reanimate but not so much in terms of show and tell but curious to what you're seeing on the ladder in any case thanks for watching hope you have a great one and stay safe out there